Castaic Jane Doe, as she's dubbed online, was discovered on September 7, 1969 in Castaic, California. On the Doe Network, she is listed as having passed away three to six months prior to her discovery. She was possibly shot and only had partial remains. Castaic Jane Doe is estimated to have been 19 to 26 years old, 5 foot 5 with hair and eye color unknown in some sources. The clothing found includes a mini dress or blouse, which was white or light beige with a dark brown check and floral pattern. The fabric is described as having been an eyelet type weave lined in beige or weave lined in beige. There was a ring found, which was size nine and one quarters or 9.25, nine and one quarter uh, was found near her grave. It was a metal ring that was manufactured by James Avery Jewelers, which at the time had stores only in Texas, Oklahoma, Georgia, Louisiana, and Colorado. The ring was most likely purchased in Texas near Kerrville, Austin, or Dallas. The inside of the ring was stamped with an insignia of three candles. The remains had been disturbed by animals, her skull not being located. The Doe Network states that she was likely not from the Santa Clarita Valley. She may have been a hitchhiker drawn to the Hollywood scene. Namus lists that her hair color was brown. There have been no comparisons to her case, and her Namus profile was created on September 9, 2008. I could only find a couple of articles from this time period that were talking about her, of which I knew for sure were about her. On September 10th, 1969, the signal had on the front page, the Grizzly Gorman find, a shallow grave, no clues. It had stated that a shallow grave was found by a family who were out target shooting and picnicking near Gorman, California. The grave had been unearthed by animals. Described as the desolate area of Whitaker Peak, about 10 miles north of Castaic, and about a mile off Golden State Freeway. This became the burial ground for an unidentified woman. The woman's body was found by three brothers and their families. Charles Law told police that he used the area practically every weekend for target shooting. Only two weeks prior had shot a bird not 20 feet from the shallow grave. Larry Law, 28, of Dayton, Ohio, said, We were walking along the trail and smelled an awful odor. Then Charles Law is quoted, having said, I looked under the trees and saw something. I thought it was a deer. Then when I got closer, I saw a leg sticking up and saw that it was human. The Law brothers, including their brother Philip, their wives, and their 11 assorted children, spent the rest of that afternoon answering questions from the sheriff's deputies, a representative of the coroner's office, and newsmen as they had gathered near the gravesite. By that Tuesday, the coroner's office had determined that the body was that of a woman about 5 foot 5 and 130 to 140 pounds. She had shoulder-length light brown hair that had a reddish tint. The body, clad only in a white eyelet over blouse, had been first unearthed by animals and was badly decomposed. Detectives found a sterling ring on, with a cross on it. And this source states that the ring was a man size 8, which I think was just an error. Most every other source states that it was at least a size 9 or the 9 and 1 quarters. Charles Law said that he had not seen the body two weeks before when he was apparently only 20 feet from the grave. Sheriff's homicide detectives had said that they had no leads as to the victim's identity. The victim had only one filling in her mouth, and at the time of this article, there was no estimated age. On September 17, 1969, The Signal posted an update article titled Body of Woman Still Unidentified. It stated that the body found in a deserted area of Whitaker Peak over a week before was still listed as a Jane Doe by the Sheriff's Homicide Detectives. We have received calls, including one from West Covina, about missing relatives and friends, said Lieutenant Oliver Taylor. 
A report from the coroner's office said that the girl had been dead about six months. Lieutenant Taylor said that the estimate could have been increased or decreased depending on conditions. It could vary on how long it was before the body was partially uncovered. A body would decompose faster once the air was able to reach it. A homicide detective said that unless there is a missing person report or a relative or friends that come forward, it will be difficult to identify the woman's body. We pretty much rely on someone who is closely related to a person who was missing to aid us. They are much more familiar with the disappearance than we are. We get a lot of calls from people who haven't seen someone for a period of time. Then we check the dental and doctor's records with the unidentified body. If we don't get the assistance of the public on a matter like this, it's extremely difficult to identify a body. We have to have something to base a comparison on. To quote Lieutenant Taylor, The woman's body was found just off a winding dirt road between Castaic and Gorman, as stated before. The shallow grave was found near some low-hanging bushes when, of course, the hikers had smelled a terrible odor. On September 10, 1969, the Los Angeles Evening Citizen News posted an article titled, Teeth Only Clue to Idea of Corpse. It said that a case of excellent teeth were the best clue to ID the Jane Doe found around Castaic. She had a small pinhole cavity with a silver filling. The Evening Citizen posted an article on September 8, 1969 that was titled, Woman's Body Found on Hilltop. It had stated that Jane Doe was found on a hilltop in a shallow grove, nine miles north of Castaic. Deputies at the New Hall Sheriff substation said that the body was unearthed near a truck trail that may have been used to supply a U.S. Forest Service lookout. I couldn't ever find any more tips or leads with that part right there. On September 29, 1969, the Valley Times posted an article asking, Did you know this woman? It showed pictures of the clothes she was found wearing along with the ring. It was noted how short the hemline was in contrast to Jane Doe's height. There's very little to go off of, though, beyond that. It's hard trying to find more articles about Castaic Jane Doe when there are so many other people in that area during the same time period that were also found and unidentified. I was just going through the newspaper articles and there was, unfortunately, a lot of unidentified people or bodies found around Castaic, California during 1969. There is a small but good thread about her posted on Web Sleuths. I was able to find some of the articles other users, that users had posted and then clipped them. Many think that the ring is a major clue to the case, and I would have to agree, because the ring was a size 9 and 1 quarters in men's. At 5 of 5, Jane Doe would have been way too little to wear the ring. Cenozoic on Web Sleuths pointed out that James Avery, the maker of the ring, is still in business, which I can confirm. They linked a similar ring for sale on the James Avery website and also posted a link to average ring sizes. On Brides.com, the average ring size for men is considered to be a size 10. Men's rings are also thicker and sometimes will need a larger size to enable them to easily get the ring on and off each day. For women, the average ring size is size 6. So, either way, it seems that the ring was not owned, or at least physically wearable, by Castaic Jane Doe. One user, Richard, noted that Jane Doe might have been killed by John Norman Collins of Ypsilanti, Michigan, when he and his crime partner, Andrew Manuel, were visiting California. One source on Wikipedia is cited as noting that Collins and Manuel killed a, gir a girl in California. The source doesn't seem to name this girl, though I'm pretty sure it seems to be implied to be Roxy Ann Phillips. Phillips was murdered on June 30th, 1969 in Carmel Highlands. 
This is all around the San Francisco type area, which is a bit far from Castaic. And while it is possible, I'm truly unsure if they're linked to Castaic Jane Doe or not. I took the time to look at any potential matches for this Jane Doe. There were some people that I thought would be similar to Castaic Jane Doe, though these are all just my guesses. I tossed around the idea of people like Laura Flink, Wanda Gale Lowe, Mary Lou Boston, and Nikki Diane Britton. I think that Wanda Gale Lowe may be a potential match, at least one worth comparing DNA to. Wanda Gale Lowe went missing on July 26th, 1968 from Tahoe City, California. She's listed as having been 5'2", white, with brown hair and blue eyes. Wanda was known for wearing hippie round-rimmed glasses, and no clothing description was found on NamUs. Wanda was working as, at Sunnyside Restaurant and Lodge as a waitress in North Lake Tahoe when she failed to show up for work, having disappeared. She failed to pick up her last paycheck, too, and her mail hadn't been checked for three weeks. According to the Doe Network, Wanda was born on May 13, 1942, and was 26 at the time of her disappearance. Her vehicle, a green 1969 Buick with Washington license plates, was found in the parking lot of the restaurant. Her mother reported her missing in August of 1968. The Doe Network says that sometime before or after Wanda went missing, her campsite in the Blackwood Canyon was dismantled and property was stolen from it. I don't know what was stolen. I'm not sure what the inventory was. In November of 1981, the Nevada County Sheriff's Office received a call stating that Wanda may have been murdered in Truckee. In 1991, investigators received the tip that a man confessed to a friend to murdering Wanda and burying her somewhere in the Carpenter Valley near Truckee. The suspect committed suicide soon after the confession, and dentals for Wanda seemed to be unknown. Next is Mary Lou Boston, who went missing on September 1, 1968. Mary went missing from Sacramento, California, and that's all that really seems to be known about her case. The Doe Network states that Mary Lou may have also used the surname Venn. She was born on December 4th, 1944, and was 23 years old at the time of her disappearance. She was 5'4", 115 to 120 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. She had eyeglasses. Dentals don't seem to be available. Last is Nikki Diane Britton, who went missing on July 16, 1969, from Albany, Oregon. Nikki was 15 years old at the time of her disappearance, born on July 23, 1953. She was white, 5'4", 145 pounds with brown hair and green or hazel eyes. Dentals are available for her case. All that seems to be known is that she was last seen at home in July of 1969, and that's about it. Those are just a few girls that I thought would be interesting comparisons. Thinking about the details of the case, if the Law family hadn't smelled a decaying corpse two weeks prior to finding J. Doe, then we may be able to assume that somebody moved her body there in between this time period. We may even be able to assume that she was killed by a male, who either left his ring on her as some sort of token or calling card, or as an honest error. I'm unsure what state of being the remains of Castaic Jane Doe are in, in modern day. It if, the big question is too, if there are any remains left at all. Without DNA comparison, unfortunately, I don't know what we could, what else we could do to solve this case. I just think of someone like Little Miss X from Arizona, who, whose remains, as far as I still understand, are essentially missing, buried somewhere in a cemetery, but no one can seem to remember where. I don't know if this is the same for Castaic Jane Doe. 
in a strange way, I'm very, very curious to see all the people that wouldn't be her. I hope maybe we can find some answers. I hope DNA for her is available too.